Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will introduce the transconjunctival approach. Uh, here you can see the incision line. The main advantage of transconjunctival approaches is that they produce excellent cosmetic results because the scar is hidden in the conjunctiva. Uh, if a kinthotomy is performed in conjunction with the lateral extension approach, the only visible scar is the lateral extension which heals with an inconspicuous scar. Uh, another advantage is that these techniques are rapid and no skin or muscle dissection is necessary. A disadvantage may be a limited excess of non-extended or non-combined approaches in comparison to lower eyelid skin incision. Transconjunctival lower eyelid approaches are performed in several ways. Uh, one is transconjunctival inferior fornix, uh, transcaruncal, transconjunctival with lateral skin extension, that is a lateral canthotomy, combination of inferior uh, A and medial B, uh, and C-shaped incision, that is combination of A, B and C. The typical lower fornix transconjunctival approach is in the lower eyelid exposes the floor of the orbit and infraorbital rim as well as the upper edge of the interior maxilla. Here you can see uh, the area exposed by this approach is the floor of the orbit, infraorbital rim, as well as the upper edge of the in, upper edge of the interior maxilla. And via pre or uh, transcaruncular approach, it is on the uh, medial side. The medial wall of the orbit behind the posterior lacrimal crest uh, can be exposed. The combination of lower fornix and medial transconjunctival approach provide access to both previously mentioned area at a time. A thorough evaluation is essential to choose the appropriate lower eyelid approach. Uh, that is a snap back test to assess the laxity of the eyelid. The conjunctiva in the area of lower fornix and the lateral Canthotomy can be infiltrated with a small amount of local anesthetic containing a vasoconstrictive agent. Corneal protection is achieved with specialized shields or at a later stage of the procedure with sutures connecting the cephalic edge of the conjunctiva with the upper lid. Uh, here you can see this is the cephalic edge of the conjunctiva. It is being sutured with the upper lid. Here you can see, and here uh, it uh, is being sutured completely. Uh, but remember that while uh, you suture the cephalic end with the upper eyelid, you must remove the uh, shield uh, that is used for the protection of the cornea. The typical inferior fornix transconjunctival approach can use two different routes to access the infraorbital rim, uh, that is uh, preceptal and retroceptal. The two approaches vary in relation to the uh, in relation to the orbital septum on the pathway to the infraorbital rim. Uh, here you can see this is a uh, orbital septum and this is a uh, preceptal approach and this is a, a retroceptal approach. Here is a, another view for the preceptal and uh, retroceptal uh, incision. Uh, so uh, the retroceptal approach is more direct than the preceptal approach and easier to perform. The retroceptal route enters directly into the fat compartment of the lower eyelids. Therefore, periorbital fat may be encountered during the retroceptal approach but this is of little concern and causes no Ill, Ill effects. 
controversy exists on the advantages and disadvantages of these two surgical routes. We recommend retroceptal because it is more direct and easier to perform. A lateral canthotomy is frequently used with transconjunctival incision uh, for improved lateral exposure. If a canthotomy is performed in conjunction with the lower fornix transconjunctival approach, the lateral orbital rim and the ball can additionally be accessed. Here you can see that with the lateral canthotomy, you can access the lateral orbital wall here. This is always been shown here by the shaded area. As we said in the previous slides that the C-shaped incision combines with the medial and uh, inferior uh, transconjunctival approaches with the lateral canthotomy and provides the maximal exposure of the medio inferior lateral orbit and zyg zygomatic body. Here you can see the shaded area A, B, and C. Uh, this can be accessed by the C-shaped incision. So this C-shaped incision provides the maximum exposure uh, around the orbit. Transconjunctival approaches demand surgical precision in execution because several complications can occur, such as damage and abrasion to the cornea, damage to the extraocular muscles, and eyelid male position. Thank you.